the fastest wicket taker in the history of tests is Kagisa Rabada. And when you watch him, it really is a blur of batters coming and going. There are usually runs as well, but it's hard to tell them up with the amount of batters leaving that fast. In terms of pure numbers, he has the greatest strike rate ever. Now, does that make him the best strike bowler ever? Well, that's a more difficult question. So if you need a VPN, go Nord. Use nordvpn.com forward slash Kimba to get a huge discount off your Nord VPN plan plus four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. Protect your computer like a cricketer protects its nether region with NordVPN today. You don't want to overreact to what Rabada did to India on day one of this test. But he's had so many days like this before. Not a massive amount of five wicket hauls, but an incredible amount of three and four wicket ones, like he's bulk buying for some apocalypse only he can see. And just for fun, shall we look at his strike rate, the best of all time, versus the worst strike rate of all time, which is poor Ravi Shastri, who had to bowl two and a half times as much as Rabada did to get a single wicket. No wonder he was trying so hard to become a batter. And I didn't just show Shastri to point out how funny this is. It's also to show that some men just get conditions that really help them at home, and others not as much. And maybe it is better to point out Dan Vittori than Shastri. A man who should never have even visited New Zealand on holiday was forced to bowl there for a wicket per session. So again, we can see at home, Rabada is the quickest ever. And of course that makes sense. South Africa is a place where wickets fall very quickly. Since 1990, it has the lowest average of any test nation outside the one-off test played in Ireland. While most teams are near 32, South Africa is at 30. Of course, if you just look at quicks, it stretches out even further. They are seven runs a wicket better than Indian wickets when bowling seam. So if you are a fast bowler, there is no doubt that being in South Africa is a huge advantage for you. But even so, if you look at home bowlers in the history of our game, including a lot of South African fast bowlers, there is also no doubt that Rabada is the best home bowler we have ever seen. Runs per over is the only thing that would slow him down. But when you average under 20 and take a wicket every five and a half overs, who the hell cares what your economy is? But it is weird that James Anderson and R. Ashwin get hit with the biased pitch claims and Clouderson and all this sort of stuff. So it shows you that even in being called overrated, South Africans are underrated. And I just want to focus on the other quickest strike bowlers in home conditions here. Because this group of three, Waka Yunus, Dale Stane, and Malcolm Marshall, are all attack the stumps, skiddy type bowlers. They obviously had other skills, but I don't think it's by accident that all of them are in the same area. And I think what makes Rabada special is that he has the pace and energy to explode through the batters onto the stumps. But because of his size, he can also get good bounce on a short ball, making it very hard to keep down. And I think his most important natural ability would be the bounce he gets from back of a length. That's something that these other three bowlers do not get. But Rabada also has the ability to move the balls both way laterally. So he has elements of a tall bowler and elements of the skiddy strike rating bowlers, which doesn't which of course doesn't make sense as I say it out loud. But it means that on any wicket, he has a skill that will work for him. By location, he averages the most in Asia, offs. But even then, it's a healthy 35. But his bowling works in the West Indies, Australia, plus New Zealand and England. This is something that travels even if at his best, he's at home. So what about away when you just look at strike rate? He slips down all the way to the eighth best of all time. And Stain is first which suggests that South Africa breeds great strike bowlers and not just guys who are very good at home on friendly wicket. And that makes sense because South African pitches are a weird hybrid of Australia, West Indies, England, and New Zealand. So perhaps that is part of it. To be successful at home, you need to be fast, but also good at flat and sometimes sluggish wickets. That's far more rounded than, say, bowlers from England and New Zealand who just want sideways movement or tall bowlers who succeed in Australia. This is Rabada home versus away. And on first glance, you would probably think, well, he's clearly a hometown hero only. But he's still averaging way less than 30 when traveling and striking far more than anyone else would. He is good enough to be a great bowler for a nation on his away stats alone. It's just that at home, there is nothing that can stop him. When we looked at all of his wickets together, he was two balls better at striking than any other bowler ever. But if you look at his home only, he's almost an over better than Wakar Yunus. 
Kagisa Rabada is on an island on his own. He is the most destructive home bowler Test cricket has ever seen, and it is not even close. But I did want to have a look at him against those other guys who were very good at taking those wickets home in a way. You can see he has a better strike rate than Sid Barnes, who averaged just over 16. That is pretty damn sexy. But when I thought about that, I was like, well, these two played in completely different eras. We have to have a look at how quickly wickets were taken in those times. Barnes actually had a lower balls per wicket era than even Rabada did. So while he still deserves his place at the top, Rabada is striking faster than him in a tougher period to get wickets. And while wickets happen quicker now than in any other modern era, it's still nowhere near quick enough to account for Rabada's strike rate. And in the top 10 strike rates of all time, there's three present day bowlers. So they're not exactly dominating. So while era plays a part, I think we can say that Rabada has earned his spot. But contextually, is he the greatest strike bowler of all time? When I looked at the great strike bowlers of all time and looked at them by era, Fred Truman was taking a wicket every 21.7 balls quicker than the rest of his bowlers combined. But when adjusting for era, it is Waka Yunus who is still the greatest strike bowler ever. So Rabada, at worst, is third. This isn't a home thing, and I'm sure your uncle will say that modern batters give their wickets away too easily now, but also, that is not the case. This is simply that Kagisa Rabada is taking wickets at a rate that we have never seen before. If you like this video or anything we do on this channel, you can actually go over to the Good Areas podcast channel and at the end of every day's play between India and South Africa, we will be doing a live video called The Scoreboard.